The release of Apple's Vision Pro marks the dawn of a new era that will dramatically change the way we work, live, and relate to each other. And this is just the beginning. At their annual developer conference in June, Apple announced their entry into the VR headset wars, promising the merging of our digital lives with the physical world. Or as they're calling spatial it, spatial computing. Spatial computing. Spatial computing. Spatial computing. And when you combine this spatial computing with recent breakthroughs in AI, the boundary between the virtual and physical worlds is not just blurred, but completely erased. There is a future very near to us where the worlds we find meaning in don't actually reflect reality anymore. When anyone can live the experience of their favorite stories as if they are actually there, why would anyone want to ever take the headset off? Just like the social media revolution of the 2000s and 2010s that came before it, Apple's vision for the future exploits something fundamental about our human nature, our innate ability to relate to each other through stories and emotional connection. Since the dawn of civilization, stories have been the lifeblood of our culture. These stories are more than entertainment. They are the, the threads that weave the fabric of our society the shared experiences that bind us all together. And this ability to understand and create meaning in stories is hardwired into us. It's the reason that mnemonic devices like the story method work. This technique leverages our innate ability to remember narratives more effectively than isolated facts. This method works because it relies on the profound impact stories have on our cognition. They are fundamental to how we process and remember information. Our brains are wired to think in narratives, to understand the world around us as a series of interconnected events with causes and effects, heroes and villains, beginnings and endings. But beyond the cognitive power, stories hold a deeper, more visceral sway over us. Subconscious is motivated by emotion, right? Not reason. We need to find a way to translate this into an emotional concept. They have the ability to stir our emotions, to make us laugh and cry, to inspire us and move us in profound ways. The emotional impact of the stories we tell is what sears it into our minds. And the more realistic our experience of a story, the more we can suspend our disbelief and the stronger an impact a story will have over us. The dawn of AI adds an intriguing layer to this new technology. AI can not only create smarter devices and more efficient systems, but in the context of augmented reality and storytelling, it has the potential to breathe life into our narratives, to create characters that respond and adapt in real time, making our stories not just immersive, but highly interactive, and uh, probably more importantly, highly addictive. We live in a world where our phones expertly hack our dopamine reward system to keep us addicted to these handheld black mirrors. By combining artificial intelligence with augmented reality, we will harness the power of stories to shape our experiences and memories in unprecedented ways, ultimately redefining our perception of reality. The dream has become the reality. Who are you to say otherwise? Huh? Unreal Engine recently released a demo showcasing the future of video games, where players can interact with NPCs powered by generative AI, and they can do it using natural language. It's, it's more than just a leap in photorealism. It's a revolution in how we engage with virtual worlds. Imagine having a natural conversation with a virtual character that not only looks human, but also responds and behaves like one. Combining that with augmented reality, where you feel like you are in the same room with this character. Hey, Jen, how are you? Unfortunately, not so It raises good. the question, what happens when we can potentially relate more deeply and emotionally to non-humans in a virtual world rather than the real people in our lives. Just as social media has paradoxically isolated us from each other, technology now offers a solution to the problem. Virtual companionship. A lot of startups and even open source projects are now offering the opportunity to interact and role play with our own virtual companion. You can video chat, you can voice chat, you can even have a text conversation with it throughout, throughout the whole day. But when you add the layer of virtual reality to all of this, the possibilities become yet, truly endless. Voila. Voila petit. These experiences could feel as real and meaningful as interactions in the physical world. But if you're only looking at what's possible right now, you're missing a huge, 
Part of the picture, we're currently living through an exponential increase in the pace of technological development. Given that, it seems inevitable that we will be able to create a virtual world in the near future that is indistinguishable from reality. How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Elon Musk's Neuralink is starting human trials this month on brain to computer interfaces. This tech aims to create a seamless connection between our brains and machines, potentially allowing us to experience virtual realities as if they were our own physical world. This can't be, be what? Be real? Once we start talking about and it becomes possible to directly hijack our senses at the brain level, it becomes important to ask the question, have we been here before? Deja vu. What did you just say? The Nobel Prize in Physics for 2023 was awarded to three physicists who proved that the universe isn't locally real. Son of a bitch, I knew it! What does that mean, though? Real, in this sense, means that objects have definite objective properties independent of observation. This is the view that Einstein held when he famously said, God doesn't play dice with the universe. But in our reality, the evidence shows that objects don't actually have those properties unless they are being observed. In other words, our universe, just like a video game, only renders things when we're looking at it. Whoa. The most infamous scientific experiment that shows this is the double slit experiment. Light can either act as a wave or a particle, depending on the context. This is a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics known as wave-particle duality. The gist of it is you fire particles like photons or electrons toward a barrier with two slits. Behind the barrier is a detection screen that records the impact of the particles. In a sane world, you'd expect to see impacts on the detector screen at the spots where it's exposed by the two slits. But instead, you see an interference pattern like you'd expect from waves interfering with each other. But this means that the single particles you're firing are somehow going through both slits at once, like a wave would, and interfering with itself. So let's get to the bottom of this, you tell yourself. You place another detector at the slits to see which one the particle goes through to produce this interference pattern. But when you do this, the interference pattern disappears. It's as if the particles know they're being watched and decide to behave like particles again. Or to put it more precisely, the instant one of the detectors detects the electron, the wave function collapses from a set of probable values to actual values in this universe. This experiment has been tested and confirmed many times over the years in a whole bunch of different ways. It's why quantum mechanics is sometimes referred to as the most successful theory in the history of science. Despite how counterintuitive it is and the many attempts of the smartest people in the world to prove it wrong, it still holds up. So what does all that mean? What, what does it mean? Well. More recent ideas explain this by proposing that computing, instead of the four-dimensional space-time that we're all used to, is a fundamental property of the universe. This would sound very strange to say, but the equations of physics, Schrodinger's equations and Maxwell's equations and all of them, are not fundamental. They're a representation of physics that was accessible to us in the era of having a pencil and a piece of paper. This means that the universe itself might operate like a giant quantum computer processing information at the most fundamental level. It's really getting at new ways to think about how the universe works. And there are a number of things that are hard to do in traditional physics that make more sense when you start with information and computation as the root of physical theory. So do we live in a giant video game? Maybe our future self, the consciousness that is the combination of humanity and machine, maybe it wants to experience what it was like to live through the dawn of AI. Or maybe we're just artifacts in a universal simulation that is trying to compute something and we accidentally became self-aware. Or maybe this is the first time we've been here. Maybe this is base reality and the Apple Vision Pro is the first step in creating our matrix. When you start to make unfalsifiable claims like this, you're definitely venturing out of the field of science. I mean, can we ever hope to pierce the veil of reality and glimpse the true nature of our universe? You may be surprised to find the answer is yes. If you want to learn more about these first baby steps that humanity is taking outside the confines of space-time, 
and how AI is helping us get there, you should watch uh, this video next. So much love that the whole thing feel like a lie.